the cryptocurrency market's price action has finally taken a pullback. So we're going to do a little bit of technical analysis to see where we might land as far as the next couple of days, couple of weeks. And we got some new indicators and some new drawings that we're going to use to do so. Then we're going to get into the debate of whether there's a right or wrong way of getting into cryptocurrency or investing in the cryptocurrency as far as strategy goes. Then finally, we're going to wrap it up with the idea that this next cryptocurrency bull run may be one of the biggest opportunities of our financial lives. Welcome back to another episode of Where the Money At. You know we're getting right into it. You know we're rocking and rolling, so let's get it. Let's pull up CoinGecko here and refresh the page real quick. We have Bitcoin sitting right at $42,000, $42,100. We have Ethereum at $2,317, BNB at $313, and Solana at $106. So, um... We've, we've had a little bit of a pullback. Bitcoin has fallen roughly 4.3% on the week after, you know, the last one or two weeks of amazing price action. But let's pull up um, trading view here on the daily and let's pull up the local ranges that we're in currently. So currently we're sitting here and we've been here since roughly the beginning of December between $40,000 and $45,000. So this is where our traders are likely living right now. And speaking of traders, we're going to get into order blocks today, mental levels that institutions go in and out at. So it kind of gives us a better idea of where you might want to do your DCA or your trading if you want to be a day trader. So this is like looks like we're going to where we're going to live for a little bit. But let's zoom out for a second and look at the price action on the weekly. So as you can see around. $16,000. There is there's a little bit of a resistance here as we blast it through here and we turn this into support. If we look around $31,000, we had resistance. No, we had support and resistance here. So that may be an area we want to look at. So let's 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 do it like this. Let's make a rectangle. Let's look at the mental levels that institutions are sitting at. So these two order blocks here may be something that we want to look at as far as when we're looking at how high we could go in this current cycle or how low we could go in the next cycle. And even if you want to zoom out a little more, let's say we break this low, we'll probably be somewhere in here between this resistance and this support at 16,000. So when you zoom out, it kind of gives you... Um, a more complete picture and it takes a little bit of the guessing out now sometimes yes we can blast straight through these and we've done it in the past but most of the time you can kind of see where a lot of the uh support and resistance occurs so that'll help me as far as how i like to choose to dca like should i wait a little bit or should i put a little more in this month and that's a little something to look at so let's get these out of the way and one indicator that i want to look at now and get a little more into is the money flow index now you know we look at the rsi and you know we look at the macd but let's look at the money flow index that shows how much money is flowing in and out so if we look at it on the daily we're kind of in the middle heading towards the upside which the top side indicates oversold the bottom indicates overbought so no no I, i'm sorry the top indicates overbought and the bottom indicates oversold so as far as the local price action here we're headed up to the top Let's look at it on the weekly. I think the daily is a little bit too choppy. I think the weekly and the monthly give us a better idea. So as you can see on the weekly, we're, we're a little bit past overbought. So this indicator is telling us that we have some time to come down and cool down as far as price action. So that may bring us down to this order block that we placed here around $30,000. And let's look at it on the monthly just to see what they're talking about. Uh, it's on the uptick. It's on the uptick towards the overbought range. So this could be a local top as far as $45,000 go. Now, this is just one indicator. You know, you have to use all these indicators in conjunction to make your price predictions on where you want to go. And, you know, none of this is financial advice. You don't want to trade solely off one indicator or, you know what I'm saying, of several indicators because, you know, they're just, you know, mathematical equations that come together to give you a visual representation of what they think could happen. So lastly, Let's look at this really quickly. And that is the 200 EMA. And we're on the daily. So this is the 200 daily EMA. And starting to curve up a little bit, starting to catch up a little bit to the price action. So what concerns me is if we crack it and we go below it, I think we're really going to go below it. But we could stay above it and it could propel us like it did back in October 2020. 
So that's it for the price action. So let's get into a little bit of theory. Is there a right or wrong way to do cryptocurrency? And my answer is no. There is no right or wrong way to invest inside of cryptocurrency. And let me explain to you why. What I like to do is I like to DCA, which is I set a certain side, a certain portion of money aside every month and invest into a couple of projects I like, mainly Bitcoin and Ethereum and some altcoins. But, you know, that's the safe route. There's other routes like um, some people love to invest in meme coins and they try to find the next meme coin because they have crazy, crazy price action that could happen. Like you could put one hundred dollars into a meme coin and it turns into five thousand, ten thousand dollars. I personally don't like to do that. Why? Because I am I take a safer route. You know, I take the boring. I treat I treat crypto like 401k. You know, what I'm saying? I don't plan on getting in and out. I put money in there and I'm investing in Bitcoin and Ethereum for the long term. And I'm trying to find other projects that are going to last for the long term. But whoever got in Dogecoin early has had great returns. Whoever got in Shiba Inu early has had great returns. And there's going to be another meme coin that pops up and emerges inside of the top 100, top 20, top 15. You know what I'm saying? So there is I can't I can't tell you that my way is correct because somebody may have a meme coin portfolio that outperforms mine by a hundred times. Um, some people like to go all in on one coin. It's very dangerous. Uh, if you go online and you look up internet computer, there are some people that live and die by internet computer. There's some people that live and die by Ripple and they they that's their main bag and that's what they get into. They may have 90% of their portfolio inside of one coin and 10% inside of Bitcoin and Ethereum, if they even buy it. Some people's portfolio is all altcoins. And I can't sit here and tell you that that's wrong or right. You know what I'm saying? You just kind of have to kind of have to see what happens, you know, at the end of the day, whenever you decide to sell or whenever we decide to pull out. So there's other strategies like someone's going to make a big bag in NFTs. I don't know how to pick NFTs yet. You know, that, that I, I got some people I talk to on Twitter and we debate and they tell me about some things, but I don't know how to pick NFTs yet. You know what I'm saying? But somebody is going to make a huge bag off of NFTs. Somebody's going to make a huge bag off of DeFi, decentralized finance. Now, there's decentralized finance is huge. There's a million ways you can make money. There's a bunch of protocols and financial protocols that are coming out. And one way people can make money is called yield forming. So yield forming is when you hop from protocol to protocol, taking your proceeds from the last protocol and putting it into this one. So let's say there's a, a coin called A Finance and you put it in there for a week and you get 10 percent and you take that out and you put it inside of a new coin called B Finance and you get 20 percent in the next week. And you just hop from protocol to protocol. You know what I'm saying? And that's to be honest with you, that's what traditional finance companies do just on a on a on a larger level, on a more complex level. They yield for them. Same way we do here. So the only thing that can really protect you inside of this cryptocurrency game, and none of this is financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. This is just one something that I'm extremely interested in, and I'm so interested in it that I decided to make a YouTube channel about it. The only thing you can do to protect yourself is educate yourself and stay in the game. Have time in the game because all that equates to experience. And that's that's really the only thing that's going to get you right inside of cryptocurrency. Like, if you if you if you're in it for a year and then you get out for a year and then you try to come back in it like that's I don't think it's going to work like that. But, you know, who knows? But that's my opinion. The best thing is time and experience. You're going to take losses. You know what I'm saying? But that comes with any investment class that you're going to get into real estate, starting a business, stocks, trading that you're going to take losses. You can't you can't succeed without having losses because those losses are lessons and you have to take L's in order to get to where you want to be. So that's my little spiel on that. Yeah, there, there is no right or wrong answer on how to invest and, and how to do stuff. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure there'll be many people who can attest to that. Like there's there's so many ways and crypto is so diverse. That's why you want to. That's why I encourage you to just dive into it, because there's no telling where you're going to land inside of cryptocurrency. Like if we look at categories as far as project goes, like there's layer ones, smart contract platforms uh sec securities there's stable coins decentralized finance that's DeFi. that's what we just talked about there's nfts there's liquid staking tokens like liquid staking is putting your money inside of or putting your uh your ethereum inside of a protocoling and protocol and getting a yield meme coins governance coins uh exchange coins like there there's so many categories and there's so many projects like i'm pretty sure there's at least a hundred thousand cryptocurrency tokens out there so that being said uh that's that so 
I said something at the beginning of the video of why this next cryptocurrency bull run may be one of the biggest opportunities of our lifetime. And I say that because cryptocurrency is only 15, 16 years old. It's a very, very young asset. And we're just now getting regulation. You know what I'm saying? Governments are just figuring out how they want to handle this. But with the asset being so young, not everybody has access to it. I'm, I think like what? 5% or 10% of the world owns crypto, if that, you know what I'm saying? It's very, very young asset. And we have companies building infrastructure that will allow people to get into cryptocurrency. Like Europe and Asia haven't been that big inside of cryptocurrency yet. South America hasn't really, really been introduced to cryptocurrency yet. But these stories I'm going to show you are going to prove to you that infrastructure is being built and you really want to pay attention to what's going on. I'm not going to talk about all of them, but we're going to run through them really quickly. And, you know, a, a lot of these are older ones that we've been through because I, we could look at this all day and find stories about infrastructure being built all around the world. Nigeria's central bank lifts cryptocurrency ban on trading. So for a while, Nigerian uh, people could not get into cryptocurrency because they had a ban. Um, and as soon as they lifted this ban, Nigerian cryptocurrency companies started applying for licenses. So that that's great news for the people of Nigeria to be able to get in. And that's great news for the entire cryptocurrency space because we want as many people around the world to be able to invest in this space as possible. Nigeria's central bank has lifted a ban on transacting in cryptocurrencies. While saying global trends have shown a need to regulate such activity, the bank said it's latest secular. The, the bank said in its latest uh, secular. So shout out to Nigeria, they're building. Um, Interactive brokers launch crypto trading in Hong Kong. Hong Kong and, and, and Asia are very, very strict about what they allow their people to invest in. And now there's new crypto exchanges coming to Hong Kong. Interactive brokers, Hong Kong has brought in its financial services to include cryptocurrency trading for retail customers, streamlining portfolio management through a single integrated platform. And that's just one company. And it looks like they're going to offer Bitcoin and Ethereum. Along traditional, alongside traditional investments. So Nigeria's building, Hong Kong's building. Who else? I had all these laid out, but I think it's, it's just refreshing every time. We talked about this in the last episode. Coinbase can now deal with virtual assets inside of France. Uh, France approves Coinbase as a virtual asset service provider, allowing the US-based cryptocurrency exchange to offer digital cryptocurrency services in the country. They can now provide custody of digital assets, buy or sell digital assets, assets and legal tender, trade digital assets against other digital assets, and operate an asset trading platform in France. So France is building. We talked about this in a prior episode. Uh, Circle and Nubank unite to give USDC access to Brazilian customers. Now, we already know what's going on in Argentina as far as their inflated currency. And that's why they have gone so heavy to try to focus on cryptocurrency, to try to find some solution to what they got going. And the whole South America is actually focusing on building infrastructure and cryptocurrency as well. So now there's a company called Nubank that has access to 85 million customers in Brazil that is partnering with a, a company called Circle that established a, a stable coin called USDC. And USDC is uh, one of the top stable coins, I believe. Is it Tether or let's see, USDT? USDC. Yep. Number seven. It's the top. It's a top ten cryptocurrency with a market cap of eleven billion. Eleven billion, three million. Yep, eleven billion, almost twelve billion. So we got that. We got OKC also building in Brazil. OKC cryptocurrency exchange OKC OKX has announced the launch of its services to users in Brazil through a dedicated local exchange and Web three wallet. So Brazil has a bunch of companies flocking to it and building infrastructure, building exchanges, building wallets for people to hold their cryptocurrency. In. So it's something to get excited about. Uh, we're going to fly through these last couple because we don't need to break down each one. Victory Securities makes crypto trading history with retail trading approval in Hong Kong. So more people in Hong Kong have the ability to trade retail now. The Netherlands-based cryptocurrency exchange, Bitvavo, secures regulatory approval in France. We already talked about France. I forgot I had two stories about them. Binance to launch Thai digital asset exchange in January. So Thailand is getting um, Thailand is giving out license and regula regulations about 
who can now open up in Thailand as far as cryptocurrency goes. And the last two stories. Oh, um, Bitcoin wallet, Caneo and Coinbase team up to bring crypto to Italian banks. Italy's building. And the last one is Japan. Oh, uh, Japan and a Saudi company are teaming up to focus on digital assets. I don't think this is necessarily about cryptocurrency. I think they're focusing on like real world assets, like tokenizing bonds and real estate and stuff like that. But falls under the same category. Cryptocurrency is a subset of digital assets as a whole. So I say all that to say we really need to be paying attention. If you think it's too late to get in cryptocurrency, it's not still building. Governments are still figuring out how they want to regulate it. And I think now is the perfect time to pitch projects you like or going deeper and figuring out which companies you like that are building cryptocurrency projects. If you like cryptocurrency mining stocks or if you like traditional companies that already are on the NASDAQ, that are building out blockchain projects. You know what I'm saying? I think this is a perfect time for that. We talked about coin. I mean, we talked about uh, PayPal, who just came out with their own stable coin. JP Morgan Chase, who has their own blockchain and their own stable coin. So I think now is a great time for you to study cryptocurrency and figure out what you want to do with it. But that's all I got for you guys today. And as always, I appreciate y'all for rocking with me and I'm going to holler at y'all.